previously on Matt Casey. You know, there's probably a narrow window of time where you can grab hardware from that era and throw it all together, get an adapter for an SSD, get a proper graphics card. You can probably build the ultimate Windows 98 machine. Comment if you want to see me do that. Oh yes, it happened. This video has been a long time in the making. It's been almost a whole year since my Windows 98 on a modern laptop video, where I posed a hypothetical ultimate Windows 98 computer and whether or not I should try to make it. Today, we answer the question. It took a long time, but I think you'll see why and hopefully it'll be worth the wait. Now, what makes a Windows 98 machine ultimate? See, ultimate can mean a lot of different things. It could mean fastest, it could mean most compatible with old games, it could mean most representative of that era in computing. My criteria for this build was the fastest, most powerful hardware that fully supports Windows 98. If you've seen my Windows 98 on a modern laptop video, you'll remember that lack of official hardware support was the biggest barrier to making it all work. Without graphics, sound, and networking drivers, it ends up being a pretty useless computer, even for 1998 standards. So, criteria number one, everything official. No under the table, back alley deals for hardware support on this setup. Now, it's relatively easy to find old hardware that supports Windows 98, but when we talk about fastest possible, it starts to get a little dicey. We end up with more or less what I predicted, a very narrow window of time to choose our hardware from. Too new, and the manufacturers will have dropped support for Windows 98. Too old, and it starts to not be ultimate anymore. I thought this window of time would be somewhere around 2007, 2008, but I found it was actually a lot more like 2004 to 2005. It's easy to forget that most versions of Windows didn't last as long as XP. That being said, let me present to you the hardware that I ended up choosing. Mmm, I love the smell of computer hardware in the morning. Just kidding, I'm too trash to be awake in the morning. In this corner, the all-important central processing unit. And what a unit it is, the Intel Pentium 4 670 running at a whopping 3.8 gigahertz. This thing is the fastest Pentium 4 they ever made and pretty damn rare, probably due to its exorbitant price tag of $851. Tracking one of these bad boys down is the biggest reason that this video took so long to make. But wait, if Windows 98 runs on an i5, couldn't I have picked an i7 or a Xeon or something like that? Indeed, the problem was never CPU compatibility, but it was the compatibility of all the hardware around it. And as far as I know, there aren't any 98 compatible motherboards that support more than a Pentium 4, or at least none that I could actually get my hands on. So as far as I know, this is the fastest CPU we can get for a board that supports Windows 98. What board you may ask? Well, a Socket 775 board that supports 98 is not super easy to find. 775 was around from 2004 to 2011, by which time the vast majority of people were on Windows XP and later 7. But if we look in that narrow window of time, once again, we should be able to find what we're looking for. This is what I went with. A Gigabyte GA uh, Pro, fully compatible with 98 from the sound to the networking chips. It also came with another Pentium 4, a measly 3.4 gigahertz, which we'll need to swap out with our ultimate CPU. Now a motherboard like this does not support our modern day PCI Express graphics protocol. Instead, it supports the generation before AGP. Which brings us to our next topic. You can't have the ultimate PC without the ultimate graphics card, and here we have the last and most powerful card that Nvidia ever released for Windows 98. The NVIDIA GeForce 6800 ULTRA. This too is a really hard component to find, especially since we needed it in AGP. But they're out there, mostly overpriced, but they are out there. The only way I could get this one was as part of a set of several graphics cards. Did I do it? Yes. Am I proud? Yes. Should I regret it? Probably. Less exciting is the RAM. Once again, more than one gig of RAM is a big no-no for Windows 98. So we keep it simple. One gig of DDR1. I doubt we'll even get close to consuming all of that anyway. Now the hard drive. The classic 3.5 inch 7200 RPM parallel ATA hard drive is getting the f*** out of here. 
How would this ever be the ultimate setup if we weren't installing an SSD? Yeah, it's not exactly authentic to the time period, but it'll work out of the box, so I say that counts. Samsung 120GB SSD because 98 only supports drives up to 128. Speaking of inauthentic storage for the time period, just for the hell of it, why not a Blu-ray drive? I actually have no idea if 98 can even comprehend this large of a disc, but honestly I'm really excited to find out. And besides, we'll need a CD drive to get Windows installed in the first place. Pentium 4s are hot boys. Literally, they are infamous for consuming a lot of power and running extremely hot. You look so hot today, oh. like a sunrise. When an Intel CPU gets too hot, it starts to throttle down its performance to prevent itself from overheating. So, if we want the best performance possible and to, you know, not set anything on fire, we'll need some high caliber cooling for sure. Enter the Cooler Master Hyper 103 with its massive heatsink and fan. Now you might be disappointed that I didn't go liquid cooling for this and it's not that I didn't consider it, I just couldn't really be bothered with all the setup, maintenance and cost. As long as the chip runs cool enough to run at 100%, I, that's good enough for me. Next up is the power supply and I'll admit, this is one that I had lying around, it's a Gigabyte G... Providing 600 watts of power, which should be plenty for this build. And just to round it all out, finally, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Hey, the ultimate PC should have the ultimate communications. And with that, we're pretty much ready to build. Now, I have one more anachronism that I hope you'll forgive me for. The case. While I could have gotten something secondhand from the era, I felt like the ultimate computer should have a clean, sparkling case. No dust, no scratches, no weird smells from another person's home, so the case is brand new. And I very much look forward to the look on people's faces when I say it runs Windows 98. Let's start building. I'm sure most of you know what building a PC is like and have no need for me to walk you through, so let me just highlight the important bits to the sound of royalty-free music. Wait, that's not royalty free! Okay, better, but maybe a little less makeup tutorial? Okay, you know what, let's stick to the makeup tutorial. While I'm building, feel free to check the full parts list down in the description, or skip ahead to this time code if you just want to see the end result. Ladies and gentlemen, let me present the beast. Now we can finally move on to testing, but this hot man deserves a much larger dwelling than this tiny coffee table. We're gonna need a bigger desk. There we go, that's more like it. Now as far as monitors go, uh, 15 inch CRT, 1024 by 768. Nah, I know what you want. You want this, don't you? 24 inch LED, 1080p. This is what you want, right? But you know what's better than a 1080p monitor? A two 1080p monitors. And a mechanical keyboard. And here we have the battle station. Now all that's left is hooking up and testing it. Funnily enough though, this is where I hit an unexpected snag. Turns out these monitors actually don't have DVI, while this card outputs only DVI. So, uh-oh, is that dual monitor dream dead as quickly as it started? Well, it turns out we're in luck. DVI may be dead, apparently, but its spec lives on in both HDMI and DisplayPort, making converting them extremely easy with a couple of dongles. And with that, everything is hooked up and ready to go. But hang on, the HDMI one seems to think there's no HDMI plugged in, even though there definitely is. Maybe it'll come up when the PC's on? Hopefully. Now you may be wondering why I haven't put the side back on, and I have what I guess you could call a superstition. Basically, almost no computer I've ever built has ever started up the first time. It can be as simple as forgetting to flick the power supply switch, or as complicated as forgetting to plug in the front panel power button. Either way, I'm expecting some kind of meme before this thing actually starts up properly. Okay, here goes. I'm turning on the power. Whoa, look at all those lights. And that... Noise! It's a lot louder than I was expecting. But these are probably all the fans at full blast and they'll probably quiet down after the post. If there ever is a post. <laughs> See what I mean by never working first try? 
Maybe it's trying to output to the HDMI monitor, which still says no signal. I'll unplug it and try just the DisplayPort monitor. Nope, still nothing. Well, it's time for an emergency DVI monitor to see if it's outputting something. Anything would be good at this point. Nope, we've officially got no output. I was starting to stress out a little bit as the possibilities went through my head. If one of the rare parts is broken, that sets this whole project back, possibly by months. But no, as I was disconnecting everything to take a closer look, I realized what I'd probably done, and it definitely wouldn't be the first time. Some of you may be shouting at me through your screens, and indeed it's true, I forgot the second power cable into the motherboard. <laughs> I got to work getting the cable in, but realized very quickly it's actually not long enough to go through the cable management. In fact, it's only just long enough to make it up there at all. I guess I could get an extension for neatness, but eh, for now let's just plug it in. Alrighty, time for round two, here we go! Damn, still nothing? So, back to worrying about what part could potentially be busted. I decided to swap the RAM out first, since that is the easiest thing to do. I swapped it out with a 512 stick, which is still plenty for 98. Okay, still nothing. Well, what makes the picture appear on the screen? The graphics card, right? I really didn't want it to be the graphics card because I'd spent all that time trying to track it down, but it was the next most likely culprit. I'm swapping in a GeForce 6600 GT from around the same era, but not quite as powerful. Well, I'm not sure whether this is fortunate or unfortunate, but it indeed now started up. I could even swap the 1GB back in, confirming RAM definitely was not the issue. Just in case, I tried the other card again, giving the pins a clean with alcohol just in case, but the writing is definitely on the wall. It looks like this card isn't going to work. Maybe I can attempt a repair at a later time, but for now, I guess we'll just press on with this card. At least we can get things set up for now, and surely I can use the big monitors now, right? Right? Okay. Are these adapters broken? This is starting to get ridiculous. Well, we've had to downgrade the GPU and the monitors, but hopefully just temporarily? Aw, oh, jeez, Rick. This post is sure taking a while. Seriously, is it going to be this slow every single startup? Oh, finally. No, it is not Boxing Day 2005, but I wonder if anyone making this board thought it would still be getting some mileage nearly 15 years later. Time to start installing Windows 98 and, uh, okay. I know for a fact this CD is bootable, so what? It can't see the CD drive? As a matter of fact, it can't. It can see the SSD, but where's the Blu-ray drive? Well, the first thing I'll do is replace the SATA cable. Once again, that's the easiest replacement, but worst case, I could swap it out with an IDE drive. Luckily, I don't have to. Turns out it was the SATA cable all along. Well, at least that was an easy fix, and the post is a lot faster too. I guess I was spending all that time trying to figure out what the Blu-ray drive was with that broken-ass cable. Now the CD boots, and we can finally get around to installing 98. Right? Oh, come on. No USB keyboard now? Really? It works in the BIOS, but not here? Oy vey, well, we'll break out the PS2 keyboard as well, then. This is what I've been reduced to. Remember me in my prime. Oh, no, no, no! So what, this GPU is dead too? <sighs> Hopefully it's enough to get things installed, but wow, is this going badly. Luckily, after a restart, it's all back to normal, but something tells me we haven't seen the last of that. I guess this is what happens when you cobble together a bunch of 15-year-old tech. Now for the familiar ritual of F-Disk, Format, and... Oh god, this is gonna take forever. This is the days before quick formatting new partitions, guys. I guess I could sit here for the next hour as it writes zeros to the drive, but actually I've got a little trick for this. Let's boot up the Windows 7 installer. We're not installing Windows 7, we're just gonna use its partitioning tools to, uh, save some time. Let's run Format and... Oh, you absolute f Yes, this is a real thing Windows does nowadays. It refuses to format FAT32 disks larger than 32 gigabytes, even though FAT32 handles all the way up to 2 terabytes. Luckily, there's a free tool I can run off a USB that gets around big NTFS propaganda, but holy sh**, dude. Still, this was probably faster than waiting for Windows 98's format tool. Anyway, let's finally install. Holy sh**, it's taken so long to just get here. Now I get to see how the SSD performs. The motherboard is 
is pretty old, so depending on the I.O. controllers and bus speeds, it's probably not going to perform quite as well as it would in a newer PC, but hey, it is actually going pretty smoothly. Anyways, time for phase two, and the USB keyboard is finally working again. Skipping ahead, setup is done. It was actually decently quick as well, though definitely not as fast as a virtual machine on a modern PC. Ah, look at that first boot welcome screen. Even without a graphics driver, it is so much faster than the modern laptop was. Now, obviously we need to install a bunch of drivers, but with no network driver, driver CD, or flash drive support, it's a little challenging to get drivers over. So the first thing I'll do is burn the flash drive driver to a CD and install that, so we can install the rest of the drivers just using a regular flash drive. All done, and with any luck, when I plug in a flash drive, it should work. And there it is. Now it's time for the real fun, installing the rest of the drivers. <laughs> I've loaded this USB up with drivers from the Gigabyte website, as well as the latest 98 driver from Nvidia. I'm sure we all want to see graphics, so I'll do those first. Ah, oh, look at that. Look at all those colors. I kept going through, installing all the drivers, but started to notice that the system was suddenly freezing. A lot and then it'd start beeping when I clicked anything. And then it'd start beeping if I moved the mouse at all. Lovely. And blue screen. Even better. And it kept happening. I restarted and it'd do it again. And it was always one particular application that would hang. Message serve 32. Luckily killing it seems to bring the system back, but this is a really bad sign for the Ultimate 98 PC. I also noticed the sound isn't working, so I guess I'll try reinstalling that. Okay, and now it's just not booting entirely. Well, sh I'm not sure how this went so wrong so quickly, but since it's basically a fresh install, I could just reinstall and start over. Well, there was definitely something funky with the audio driver, so I did some research and found there was a much newer version on the Realtek website. So I guess I'll try that instead? Well, it's at least booting, but there's still no sound. What the hell is going on? Apparently this is the error, but I couldn't find any solutions for it. NT might sound like this driver isn't for 98, but it turns out these are real files on the system, just here to import some APIs from the NT series. I saw recommendations to use SFC to make sure the files were installed and valid. They were, still nothing. I was at the point where all the drivers were set up except the sound driver. That was the only one I was still struggling to get set up. I couldn't get anything to work. The old drivers from Gigabyte would just lock up the system and stop it from booting, and the new driver from Realtek would just throw this error. I even tried updating the BIOS, but it didn't help. I read people having success with the Windows 95 driver, which is a whole different architecture, VXD instead of WDM. This one would only install if I forced it to, and it came up with all these options, and I had no idea if any of these were it. I tried Intel since that's this motherboard's chipset, and it showed a sound icon, but there was still no sound and I tried each of the others as well, to no success, and it was just as I was starting to lose faith in this sound card when, as foreshadowed from earlier, this graphics card too crapped out entirely. Big oof, fellas. In fact, I've kind of run out of AGP graphics cards that do work, and I'm not entirely sure what to do now. So yeah, this has already taken way too long. I'm not giving up, but in the interest of getting something out there, I've decided to end this video here, and when we meet again in part two, hopefully we'll have something that actually works. Okay, well, um, thanks so much for watching, and I guess I'll see you guys in the next one. Subscribe to Mac